Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial when you go to audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Visit audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge today. My name is Fred Kep. I'm the host of the Teacher Recharge podcast, and I just made some brand new theme music. Let's hit it up right now. Teacher Recharge listeners, welcome back to school. It's a new semester. Hey, it's a new year. Happy New Year to you. And of course, as with every new year, we have this new year, new me stuff going around. So I want to know, what is one resolution that you are doing for the new year? I really, and one of my resolutions, I'll, I'll be honest, is I want to create a better, more close and tight community of my listeners here for the Teacher Recharge podcast where we can all bounce ideas off of each other. We can put strategies into maybe a Facebook group, something like that, where we can all start to have this conversation to really hold ourselves accountable and just become better together. I think that would be an amazing vision. I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's uh, a big enough podcast yet to to start that this year or not, if you think that's a decent idea, I want to hear that in your email as well. So I want to know your resolution and I want to know what you think of that idea, kind of building a community of teachers. Um, obviously, it would be free. It'd just be to have a safe space where you can go and, and kind of talk with like-minded individuals. But anyways, let's get into a great interview to start off our year. It is with a sixth grade teacher in Chicago. His name is Mitchell Meehan. And my goodness, this guy is, uh, he, he's just, he's on top of things. First of all, he's an Apple Distinguished Educator in the class of 2017. He's a Google Certified Educator, level two. Uh, he was Fairview School District Employee of the Month in March 2015. And he's just I mean, his resume is huge. I'm not going to go through everything, but right now he was teaching in Fairview, Pennsylvania. Now he's in Chicago with Chicago Public Schools. He made the jump from high school to sixth grade in in that move. And so he kind of talks about that kind of switch, which is really, really interesting. So, but enough of me just talking about it. How about I just show you? Enjoy this interview with Mitchell Meehan. All right, everyone. Today on the show, we have another amazing guest. His name is Mitchell Meehan. How are you doing today? I'm not bad. Thanks for having me. A little bit tired, dragging a little bit because it's a Monday, but other than that, I'm doing pretty well. Sweet. Yeah. So this is actually kind of an interesting time to record a podcast because I usually don't record episodes on the day that episodes come out. So it actually is a Monday, which is awesome. For people that haven't seen you, what are you doing right now? Explain a little bit about your your educational journey and like what you're doing. Yes, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I moved to Erie, which is about two hours north of the city of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, right along Lake Erie for college. I swam in college on a four-year athletic scholarship where I did my undergrad degree in English and secondary education and went on to get a master's degree from another state school in Pennsylvania in educational technology and then wound up uh, living right where I went to college for about six years teaching high school at a suburban district just outside of the city of Erie, west of the city of Erie, almost towards Ohio. So I taught there for five or six years, juniors and seniors primarily, American literature, English class, and had a really good experience there, had a really good group of students, really good school and everything. And I just felt like I was ready for change. So I always wanted to move out of Pennsylvania and try a bigger city. So I ended up moving to Chicago this past summer and accepted a position teaching sixth grade English here in the city. Wow, that is, that's really cool. So a couple questions that that brings up. One of them is a bit more uh, me being off the cuff. So have you ever been to a, a Lake Erie Otters game, a, a hockey game? Have you ever heard of that team? I have. Oh yeah, I lived about two or three blocks right from where the Otters play. 
and the Otters play next door to where the Erie Seawolves play, which is a minor league okay. affiliate baseball team with the Detroit Tigers. And I worked for the I worked for the Seawolves for one summer as oh, part of cool. the entertainment crew. That's legit. Yeah, no, th- that's a legendary hockey team over there. But that's yeah. uh, that's really cool. Really cold part of the world too. Usually, right. when I bring people on the show, I can be like, "Oh, well, it's way colder here." No, that's not the that's no, not it's the pretty case. Pretty cold there. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so you made that jump from high school to elementary. From what I've been seeing, is is they do the opposite. They go from elementary to high school. If you had to pick, which one would you place? Like, which one do you like the most? Do you like working with the sixth graders? Like, I know they're super energetic. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think it's probably a little too early for me to make that decision. This is still just my first year. I had some middle school experience teaching before, but this is my first year, you know, in my own middle school classroom, you know, just me and the sixth graders. So I'm still getting used to their mannerisms and their ability levels and their maturity levels and all that kind of thing. And I don't even know that I can pick one versus the other when I think about them. I had to try and compare them because they're just so different every every single way in terms of how you approach management and in terms of how you plan and in terms of the way you build relationships and conversations and just everything you know, from top to bottom is so completely different with sixth grade compared to high school. Yeah. So I don't even think I could pick, you know, one or the other. There's there's different pieces of each that I think I'm better at. And there's different pieces of each that I think, you know, I struggle with more. And it really just takes a unique person to do either job. And I'm learning, like I just said, you know, strengths and weaknesses for each position, things that I definitely know I have and that I'm good at. And the things that, wow, this, this is not something I'm great at and I need to work on this certain yeah. area. That was a wonderful answer. That way, if your current students get a hold of it, I mean, it's spoken like a true uh, yeah. There you go. Well done. Um, <laughs> so this podcast is all about helping teachers start their week off with a bang, with a positive mindset, some strategies, maybe some ideas to take on into the week. And you were like the master of going up and out of what would seemingly be other people's comfort zones. From what I've been seeing, you just <laughs> go out and you do whatever it takes to, to gain your students' attention and just really be a big part in the classroom. So with that said, I would like to delve a little bit into that. So what is something that you do to start your week off that you just hit Monday running? So I think for me, mine definitely comes over the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm friends with a lot of teachers or colleagues where Sunday's their day to prep for the week and they get ready and that helps them take the nerve off and the edge off by all their lessons planned out or getting their work caught up and Sunday really sets up the week for them. Mine's kind of the opposite. I, I don't, know that a lot of people that do what I do, but really Sunday's my day to like be with myself. I go to the gym, I'm hyped up for a football game, or I'm doing stuff for me, and that's the way that I set myself up for the week. This weekend, I was looking for some Bulls tickets, so I got tickets to go to a Bulls game. I got tickets to go to a new museum that's in the area. Just, I'm always looking for stuff that I can do, you know, what I want to do, so that then I know I've had a good weekend, I've ended my weekend on a high note, and then I'm ready to hit the classroom Monday morning and ready to just grind the week out. So mine's, like I said, mine's kind of backwards, I think, from most people. I, I use my weekend and I use my Sundays as kind of my relaxing, doing what I want to do time. And that is the way that I set myself up for my week. That's what's up, man. I had in one of the other, I guess this actual episode will come out probably in January since we only have one more week of the school year left for this half of the school year. So I had in a previous episode, I had a teacher come on and say exactly the opposite of what you just said, what a lot of teachers do, which is get things ready, get things prepped on Sundays and stuff. And one thing I said to them was in in college, what I would do is I would take Friday night and Saturday completely off, no matter how much homework I had. And that caused a lot of crazy Sundays for me. But with that said, I always knew that I had that day and night to recharge and to, to do some fun stuff because it seems like you're a very adventury person, a guy that likes yeah. to go out and, and conquer the world. And I feel like for people like that, we need that kind of stuff. And if we don't get it, we're going to get burnt out. We're going to yeah. get bu- burnt out. And I think a lot of teachers out there are kind of like that. And what's interesting is, is we hear all of these other people say, oh, well, this is how you have to do it. But there's really not one way. It's just finding that way that that works for you. I really definitely used to Sundays would be my day to get ready for the week. But if now if I bring stuff home, it's really gonna be more like a Saturday morning kind of thing when I'm Mm -hmm. taking the rest of the weekend to just enjoy myself because I feel like I can get as much done on Sunday and get as prepared as I feel like I need to be for the week and get schoolwork done. But there's still going to be that looming is everything ready? Am I all caught up? So I feel right. like I just avoid it altogether and I just take the day to myself. And then, you know, because your teachers are just never caught up. There's always something to be doing. So right. I've just kind of like learned to let that go and learn to release that and um, take Sundays, enjoy them to myself. And then I, you know, get back 
to it on Monday morning. That is super cool. I love it. I love it. Next thing I want to ask, what is something unique about your teaching style? What is something that you're doing that maybe other teachers aren't doing or maybe other teachers could take notes on and maybe learn to do a little better or something that makes you a unique, uh, makes you you? This is a hard one because, you know, I get a lot of messages or people DM me on Instagram or say, uh, you're such an inspiration. You're doing A, B, and C. And I really don't think I'm doing anything different than what other teachers do. Maybe I do it with different energy or in high energy. I don't know. But I don't think I'm really necessarily doing anything specific that no one else is doing because there's just so many people out there doing so many awesome things. So I don't really know that I'm any better than anybody else. But I guess something that I do that maybe not a lot of people do is just my focus is just always relationships with students. I want to know what they did over the weekend. I want to know what they're doing after school. I want to know how their soccer game went. I want to know, you know, when they went shopping over last night, what did they do? What, where'd you go? What'd you buy? Dance class, pedicures, like anything they're into is about it. We're talking about how that relates to me how I, you know, did the same thing recently with my mom or whatever it is. I just, I'm always asking questions. I want to know what they're doing, what they're into, what their interests are. And I just think that's a way to get them to buy into what you, what, what you're trying to sell, which is, you know, school or assignments or whatever it is. Cause I just, I never understand when teachers don't take an active interest in students themselves in their lives, but then you expect them to care about commas or you expect them to care right. about well, like whatever you're forcing them to do that day. And it's like, there has to be a give and take. Like if I, if they want to tell me about their birthday party and I brush that off, how can I five minutes later expect them to be interested in how to use a semicolon properly? And it's just like, <laughs> For me, that, that's something I put a lot of time in. And I, I plan time into the day, especially Monday morning. Um, you know, I'll leave a free 10 minutes so I can give me some hands. Who's got a good story from this weekend? And then they, they love to share. And even the ones who usually maybe won't like to talk or won't like to share, as soon as it gets going and we're rolling through stories and people are raising their hands, I can get everyone to say something. And mm-hmm. it's just kind of that, like, lowering the anxiety, uh, making them more comfortable. Let's just talk about you. Like, just talk about what, we're, what we've been up to the, the past two days. So that's just something that I put a lot of value on. It's just talking to them about not even school stuff. So then in 10 minutes when we get to the school stuff, then they're kind of amped up, ready to go. And they're maybe int- more interested in what I have to say. Yeah, that is... That is really cool. A couple of things that stood out to me with that with that answer. So first of all, just scrolling through your Instagram account, which is stacked, but um, <laughs> pretty cool. I think I mentioned in the email that I that I sent to you about <laughs> you have a Kanye West quote in your classroom. The no, you're not yes. perfect, but you're not your mistakes. I mean, you. It seems like you just take inspiration from everywhere. And that takes a lot of energy, I feel. How do you keep the energy? Because going out and asking your students and caring about, not only just asking them like, oh, how are you? What did you do uh, this weekend? Like, how was that birthday party? How was that soccer game? Not only is it specific to that particular student, and that just is, it says a lot about you just knowing your students, but it's exhausting. A lot of people would say that that's exhausting. How do you keep the energy to actually go out there and build that rapport with your students and have that relationship. So I guess for me, that's just kind of why I'm in the game to begin with. I mean, I, I'm not in teaching because I'm passionate about reading and writing. I'm in really? the game because, no, I'm yeah, like, <laughs> I want to, I want them to be better at it and to be, uh, you know, to develop those skills that they can use to interact with other people and to interact with the real world. And that's why I do what I do. So it's so important for them to build those relationships with, with me, with each other, problem solving, critical thinking, those are so much more important to me than the actual content, the actual what book are we reading or what grammar lesson are we on. That stuff just to me is just like not that important. You know, we do the best we can. We address everything we can. We get as many things across as we can, but it's so much more important for them to have realistic, like I said, problem solving um, scenarios or cooperating with classmates or just building those relationships, like I said, with with each other and learning how to function with other people who are who you need to work with or working with people who you might not want to work with but you know you mm-hmm. have to have tasks to get done or you know what resource what resources are at your disposal to complete x y and z and that that kind of thing that's where my energy goes is into helping them do do those type of activities versus you know just the strict content standards lessons whatever whatever we're trying to patiently get across that's super cool. And another thing that kind of came out of the last couple minutes here is 
like I said, it just seems like you draw inspiration from everything around you, from like songs to what your students are talking to you about to, I mean, shoot, I feel like you could look outside, see a leaf and be like, oh, I'm going to use that to inspire <laughs> kids. How, how do you have that positive mindset to see things like that and then turn it and say, oh, look, I can serve these kids better because of this view? Oh, that's a tough one. I, I honestly just think, I mean, people do ask me, like, how do you, how do you know what to post on Instagram about? Or how do you know, like, what to say to people? And I really just look at any one thing. And if, if it makes me laugh, if it makes me smile, like, I will just do whatever comes to my mind, like, in five seconds. So yeah. I really don't have an answer as to, like, how I draw inspiration from things. It's just, you know, if it made me smile, if it made me think about something in a different way, if it, if I think it shows a different perspective, if it made me laugh, I will just take any dumb thing and, like, go with it. And I guess that's just my answer. I just will, am always trying to do just as much as possible. And three out of a hundred things might work or might actually be inspirational to someone, or it might actually make a student think about something in a different way. That is actually a really, although it seems like a low key answer, it's actually a really good answer because what you just described is, oh, that made me laugh. That made me happy. That sparked some positivity in me. Well, I guess I'll just put it out there because maybe it might spark some positivity in someone else. So it's just, I mean, it, you just seem like a really good guy. I don't know. Like you just seem like someone who who cares about other people and you care about your students and it shows, it shows. And it, and on, also, you know, Instagram is what it is, but uh, teaching obviously is, is the reason you're here. But like, even with like the Instagram thing is like you post something because, oh, it made you laugh. Well, hopefully that goes out to not just your kids, but like other people, you know, like that, that's such a cool, I don't know, just way to live because then you're not, not everything's about you. Not everything's about you. You're trying to push positivity out, which is fantastic. Right before the break, I just want to ask you, what is something in teaching that you have failed at and how did you react to that failure? Um, I guess I'll go with most recently, just adjusting from a high school classroom to a middle school setting just my management has just been crashing and burning like by the second and I'm trying to keep them engaged, but then any, you give them an inch and they take a mile and a half immediately. Yeah. And it's just trying to get them to stay on task and to complete whatever task or whatever assignment I'm giving them while still not running a prison. And yeah. I just had a student call up to me at the end of the day today and he was like, you need a, you need a harsher punishment for us because nobody cares <laughs> about your punishments. And I'm like, I just like laughed right in his face because I was like, okay, well, thank you. Um, I'll try and think of something else. But it's just been constant and consistent trial and error. Just mm -hmm. this, try this one thing this day. If it doesn't work, what else can we try? Right. And just kind of a back and forth and trying to see what works and what doesn't. Yeah. When you're trying and erroring anything in life, really, you're going to, you just seem like a really positive person because if you, if you fail and you fail and you fail, like let's say the next three things you try don't work, you're going to try a fourth thing. Cause that's the really, that's the core of what I've been hearing, hearing you say today, which is look like I am who I am. I like who I am and I'm just going to be me. And if that fails, I'm just going to keep trying. I love it, man. Like that is just, <laughs> that is what's up. And I hope teachers will take that into this week ahead. Real quick, we are going to take a little break. Thank a sponsor. We'll be right back. For you, the listeners of the Teacher Recharge Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, whenever I have a guest on this show, I ask them for a recommendation. So, Mitchell, what is your recommendation for a book? So, I found this book uh, recently when I moved to Chicago this summer. It just kind of stuck out to me on the bookshelf. It's called How Schools Work, an Inside Account of Failure and Success from one of our nation's longest-serving secretaries of education who was Arnie Duncan and it just kind of flipped through it a little bit and was reading some of the inserts and it seemed like a good story to me and then I picked it up and I read it and it just kind of provides some insight on how educational decisions are made because he kind of climbed up through through school systems and then you know made his way to kind of corporate education at the national level and it just really kind of opened your eyes into how <laughs> or open my eyes, I guess, into where schools come from and, you know, the budgeting piece, the finance piece, the political piece. Mm -hmm. And 
I just thought I'd give a, a, a good perspective. And it's just a good reminder that education is political. And a lot of people are afraid to bring politics into the classroom or afraid to voice their political opinions. But education is political, and especially if you're working for a public school. And it was just a cool, it was just a really cool story showing how the, basically what goes on behind the scenes of a school or of a district or of you know, a state system of education, let alone the national level. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Well, if you would like a copy of that for free, you could download it today by going to audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge. Once again, that is audibletrial.com slash teacher recharge for your free audiobook and free 30 day trial. And we are back on the interview with Mitchell Meehan. And it is my favorite time of the entire podcast. My favorite time of life, honestly, to be fair. It's story time. Oh my gosh. Even with, I, you know, I had a cold last week. And even with the cold, sounds crisp, clean, beautiful. Anyways, this is the part of the show. If you're <laughs> new to listening to the podcast, this is the part of the show where I give my guest the floor to give me whatever story they would like from their educational journey, I guess. So Mitchell, what is your favorite story? The floor is yours. So I don't know if this is my favorite, but it's something that comes to mind just kind of from recently. So when I started with my sixth graders this, at the beginning of the school year, we had an open house before school even started. And it was just kind of an opportunity for the students to come in and see their new teachers and meet their new and see their new classrooms. And the parents came in and could ask questions. It was just super informal. And they brought some school supplies to share with the class and that kind of thing. And I had a student who came in and walked up. Nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. And she was really excited because she said, I've never had a male teacher before. And I kind of brushed it off. And, you know, I thought, oh, like, yeah, well, here I am. So see you next week when school starts. And then. I was just so surprised at how many kept coming in and saying that same thing. And the mom would like, I can see the girl giggling or, you know, the boy was like, had a big smile on his face. And the parent would say, you know, he's just really excited. He's never had a male teacher before. And it just, it was kind of a recurring theme that kept coming up. And it was just something that I never even gave a second of thought to. It never was something that had occurred to me. And it was just really a good reminder to me that just by being you and, you know, all I did was wake up because that's just who I am. I was, I'm, obviously a male teacher and I didn't give any consideration to that. And just, just by doing what you're doing and by being who you are, it's just a good reminder to me that like students are really taking inspiration and drawn to you for different ways and things that you might not even realize. So it kind of just gave me like a whole new perspective on, you know, just, just me as a teacher and my role as a teacher and how even just being a male is, is they're taking certain inspiration from that. And they're, they're noticing things that I wouldn't even consider. And it just, it's just a constant, has been a constant reminder for me to just the things that they're, they're realizing and they're noticing and they're recognizing beyond things that I've intentionally set out for them to, to mm -hmm. see. So I thought that was just like a really cool little story from my beginning, the beginning of my year this year. That's really cool. Isn't it cool just to have like the smallest things that one of your, your students could say, or just something that they notice? Like, for example, I, I think I've, I've told this story before, like, I think it was like on one of the first couple episodes of this podcast, how I was coaching, I coach a group of, oh, I think they're like third and fourth graders, actually. And I just got married in, in June, and I wasn't wearing my ring to one of the, <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is a little on the flip side, but they called me out on it. And they just yeah. like, just those little things where it's like, they, they not only help you feel like, oh man, I'm doing something that's impacting people's lives. But it's all, it also, in my opinion, helps you become a better teacher, a better person. And, and if you have that perspective where you take a step back, you don't always have to be the one that's like, boom, 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 boom. But instead, you, you take the time to listen, like we've been talking about this entire episode. You take the time to listen to your students. You take the time to care about them. You can start to really learn things yourself and become a better teacher. And like I said, even, I mean, in, in a bigger sense, just a better person, which is, which is amazing. That that's really cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. With that said, I, man, I love story time. That is like super fun. 
but uh, I, I just love hearing everybody's different perspectives and everybody's, I mean, everybody has their own unique thoughts and stuff. It's, it's great. Well, we are about out of time for today's episode. So if people want to get a hold of you, if they want to follow you, if they want to know a little bit more about you, where can they reach you? Where can they find you? You can definitely hit me up on social media. I'm always down to meet new people and learn about different perspectives and answer questions. If you feel like I have something valuable to say, I like to just kind of, you know, have a conversation back and forth, bounce ideas off each other. So um, I use Twitter. Your name is the same on both. It's Mr. Underscore Mien, which is my last name, spelled M-E-I-G-H-E-N. I'm also on LinkedIn and my email is available on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram as well. So send me a message, um, connect with me. And if you think, you know, like, like I said, if you think I said something that was impactful and you'd like to you know, talk more about it. If you think I said something stupid and you want to tell me how dumb you thought it was, um, I'm always open to all kinds of feedback, all kinds of messages. I try and respond you know, as best as I can. So, Oh my gosh. And we will, we'll, we'll go ahead and put links to all of that stuff uh, in the description. Something that you just said that no other teacher so far has said when, when they're announcing this. And I, I normally wouldn't expect people to say it, but saying like, hey, I don't care if I said something that annoyed you, still reach out to me. I love it because you're you're just open. You're open-minded and keeping that open-minded view of, of teaching and open-minded view of the world is so important, especially because it rubs off on your students and then you create individuals that are open-minded and go in and want to learn things and get better and better themselves. So respect. I love it. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hey, I appreciate you coming. If you or someone you know would be great for this podcast, go ahead, email me, teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to learn more about what I speak about when I go to schools, you can go to fredmotivates.com and learn about the love and success approach to leadership. Thank you, Mitchell, me and for coming today. I really appreciate it. The listeners really appreciate it. It has been wonderful. It has been great. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. We are almost at the end of the show, but first I want to add a segment because it's a new year, new semester, and why not? So I want to give you a weekly challenge for the rest of the semester that is kind of based on what the main idea of the interview was. And Mitchell was really into relationships and forming relationships with his students. So your challenge for week one of this semester is to go out and learn one thing about either what your students did this past weekend or what they are going to do this next weekend. Okay, what are their plans? What are they going to do? Are they going to eat somewhere? Are they going to go on a trip? Are they just going to sit around and play Fortnite? You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, so that is your challenge for the week. Go and find one thing out about each of your students about what they are doing or what they have done over the weekend. All right, go out, make those relationships. Have a great week.